that danger zone that you and your crew were in for a while there. Um, Anderson, I also want to just mention this is interesting uh, a reporting from Al Jazeera that pro-Mubarak demonstrators found to have police IDs on them, tear gas canisters being let off as well. Some believe perhaps this is being or orchestrated by the regime to sort of force the army into action against some of these anti-government protesters. What are you seeing? I think there's little doubt this is being orchestrated. For what reason, I, I can't say. But, but let me just set the scene for you right here. The Egyptian museum is behind me. That is now kind of ground zero for the confrontation between the pro-Mubarak forces and the anti-Mubarak forces. I, I'm not sure how accurate you can see, but on the right, to the right of the museum are the, uh, by and large, the anti-Mubarak forces. And all in this area, uh, 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 on the, the left of the museum are the pro-Mubarak forces. What is most disconcerting is that I'm looking down now and I'm seeing hundreds more people, mobs of uh, uh, groups of pro-Mubarak supporters who are on their way to the square. If we can kind of show you, it's a, it's a little bit of a walk for them, but there's one group down, down below me. There's another large group of several hundred people carrying banners, carrying large Mubarak signs, not the kind of signs you make overnight. Those are uh, well-produced signs. Clearly, uh, these people have been called to come down here. Uh, the state television, which is controlled, of course, by the Egyptian government, is calling these pro-stability demonstrators. They're not pro-Mubarak. They're, they're being described as pro-stability demonstrators in Arabic. But, but the flashpoint right now is right in front of the Egyptian museum. That's where I was just about 15 minutes ago. We were trying to make our way to kind of the no man's land between the two groups. We never got that far. Uh, we were set upon by pro-Mubarak supporters, uh, punching us in the head, uh, attacking uh, our, my producer, Marianne Fox, uh, the cam my cameraman as well, trying to grab his camera, trying to break his camera. They, they, they at first started going for the cameras. They didn't want any pictures taken. But uh, frankly, we weren't even really taking pictures with the big camera. I was using a little flip camera, which they didn't notice. Uh, but the big camera, they, uh, they, they were trying to grab it. Uh, we immediately started to turn around. We, we realized the situation uh, would get very bad very quickly. Uh, we turned around and started to walk just calmly. The crowd kept growing, kept throwing more punches, kicks, trying to grab us. It was pandemonium. I mean, there was really no control to it. Suddenly a young man would come up, look at you, and then punch you right in the face. Uh, you know, the instinct is to try to punch back or push back, but in a situation like that, you really can't because that just inflames the crowd all the more. So all we could do is just try to walk as quickly as possible, stay together, uh, and seek a safe location, which is where we are now, and everyone on my team is fine. But, but the two groups have been separated. Um, there is a, a no man's land of maybe 300, 400 feet between them at this point. What, what is so shocking, and I said this before when I called in, is that the Egyptian military is just standing by. I mean, they have controlled the, ch the, the choke points to this area for the last nine days. This area over here, where you can see uh, some, uh, some Mubarak supporters starting to enter, there are military checkpoints there that they have been, over many days, have been checking IDs, have preventing people from getting in as they didn't want people to get in. They are allowing people to get to the square. They are allowing these pro-Mubarak demonstrators to get to the square. Now look, you can see the entire crowd is running. The entire pro-Mubarak crowd seems to be running. And from, from this vantage point, it's hard to tell why that happened. Sometimes they're running after an individual. You'll get one person starts to run after somebody, and then uh, the, you know everybody will join in. You'll get 20, 30, 40 people running after somebody, trying to beat them up if they can. Um, at, at this point, it looks like it could get a lot worse because you have these pro-Mubarak supporters pouring into the area. I'm seeing at least 300 more of them right now who are gathered down on the street uh, in a staging ground, and it looks like they are now going to be walking uh, toward this area where the other supporters are. It, it could become a battle of numbers at this point. There's still more anti-Mubarak supporters than pro-Mubarak supporters, um, but, but those numbers could change very quickly if, if state TV is in any way encouraging people to come uh, or if any groups are encouraging people to come. But this, uh, this could get ugly very quickly unless the Egyptian military decides to start to intervene. Yeah, and we're seeing in this picture, Anderson, rocks being thrown. I mean, you can see the rocks in the air uh, being pelted back and forth. Um, one question, I, you mentioned it was shocking that the Egyptian military was not stepping in. Uh, I, I was just wondering, if they, if they do move in, could that trigger um, 
you, you know, a worse situation among the anti-Mubarak demonstrators as well, a show of military force in that area as they're uh, trying to demonstrate. Uh, look, we have seen in days past, I think it was three days ago, we saw troops fire in the air to control the crowd uh, when, when the crowd was setting up on somebody who was believed to be a, uh, a secret police officer. The crowd wanted basically to kill this guy. The troops shot in the air in order to rescue this guy and bring him into an, an armored personnel carrier. If the troops wanted to, they, they could. Uh, there's a lot of respect on all sides for the Egyptian military. It's the one group in this country that has widespread support. Um, so. You know, I don't want to speak for them, but, but they are in control of this entire area. Nobody gets into this area unless they want people to get in or allow people to get in. Uh, and at this point, they are standing by. I mean, look, there's, there's a, a right in front of uh, uh, the Egyptian museum in the area that we were set upon and, and beaten. Uh, there's a, a, an Egyptian military tank as well as two armored personnel carriers. At first, the crowd tried to bring us to those armored personnel carriers for safety. Uh, but they brought us there, and there, no, no, there was no soldier uh, who was about to do anything for us. Uh, so we then had to walk all the way around while this, while this mob uh, chased us. And again, this large group now of several hundred pro-Mubarak supporters are now joining the fray, joining the, uh, the demonstrations, and this thing is just getting larger and larger. Hey, uh, Anderson, we heard that report again from someone else on the ground as well, that uh, people were actually hearing about what was happening in the square and then coming out to the streets by the thousands. It sounds like that's what you were just describing. It doesn't look like the crowd is going to be dispersing anytime soon. People are coming to the fight almost. I, I think it's fair to say that. Um, what, what's interesting is with the, the Mubarak supporters, they're coming en masse, so we're seeing large clumps of several hundred at a time, uh, which would, you can read into it what you will, whether that means they're organized or been, been called by somebody, I don't know, but they're coming in in large clumps uh, with, with signs, pre-prepared signs, so uh, there does seem to be some sort of mobilization or, or people getting the word out to come down to the square, and no doubt, oh look, now it looks like there's a charge from... I'm assuming the, the anti-Mubarak supporters, they are trying to move forward. I don't know if the Egyptian military is between the two sides, but you can see the pro-Mubarak supporters falling back en masse. I'm not sure if you can see that from uh, this vantage point. Yeah, but we but see now you have thousands of pro-Mubarak supporters literally just running back. So now it looks like, I, I see rocks being thrown. Uh, it looks like there is now a larger no-man's land uh, between the two groups. But, but again, you now have just two front lines uh, and, and rocks being thrown between the two. And Anderson, we are, you are there watching it. We are, we are watching this live feed as well. Can you help us? Or, and can you even discern which side is which in this picture we're watching? Yeah. Uh, on the left side uh, is the pro-Mubarak group. Uh, the, I, do you see the red building on your right? That's the Egyptian Museum, the large building, and probably in the foreground. The, 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 the group on the left uh, around the tower, that's the pro-Mubarak group. They've now fallen back somewhat to the edge of the Egyptian Museum. The, the anti-Mubarak protesters are on the right of the no-man's land. Uh, and, and it looks like they are starting to now try to push forward. And, you, and farther to the right is, uh, is Liberation Square. So they're not even right now in the square. There are several blocks from the square. And in the square, you have a large number, tens of thousands, it looks like, from here, although it's, it's hard to tell accurately, of anti-Mubarak supporters. Uh, but again, the flashpoint, it seems, at least on this side of Liberation Square, is right in front of the Egyptian Museum. And this is an area, by the way, that the military has especially controlled for the last nine days. They secured the museum uh, within several days of this uprising beginning. There are Egyptian troops all in front of that museum. There are tanks and armored personnel carriers on either side of that museum. So there are plenty of troops in that area if they wanted to intervene. But again, to the left now, you've seen the, the, the pro-Mubarak group has fallen back. Um, this is the farthest back. And now it looks, look, now it looks like they're about to start to rush, rush forward. Uh, this looks like it could become sort of a pitch battle. You have now people on the front lines of both sides throwing rocks, throwing bottles, whatever they can find. 
Anderson. And this is not an area, by the way, where there are a lot of rocks, so I'm not sure where... Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you what the weapons are. Uh, we were seeing in one picture people, like, appearing to chip away at some of the brick. Uh, you can see some of the either stone or brick there on the ground. I don't know if they're trying to get more weapons, uh, if they're trying to get more things to throw. Uh, we, we had earlier heard from, I believe, uh, um, Nick Kristoff yeah. of seeing a machete. Um, but what are the weapons here? How much damage can they do to one another? Well, any weapon you can imagine, we have seen on the streets of Cairo in the last nine days. Remember now, there are all these neighborhood militias, and now it looks like the anti-Mubarak anti forces are falling back. The pro-Mubarak forces are rushing forward. Uh, in terms of weapons, they have knives. There are clubs. There's a big roar now from the crowd. Oh, look at this. This is really bad. This, this is going to get ugly. Uh, the pro-Mubarak forces now are just absolutely rushing forward. Anti-Mubarak forces are rushing back to, uh, to try to link up, it looks like back in, in Liberation Square, where there are greater numbers of, of anti-Mubarak forces who can back them up. Uh, but, but you're seeing this, this ebb and flow of, of both mobs in front of the Egyptian Museum. And again, in terms of weapons, I mean, uh, in this crowd, I, I, I didn't see any because, frankly, we were being punched and kicked so much and, and, and set upon that I, I was looking down and trying not to get punched too much in the head. Um, but, uh, but we have seen, you know, clubs, knives, bats, um, two people with guns, uh, but but if you've seen people chipping away at things, there's probably paving stones that people are trying to rip up from the street that they, they can then use to hurl um, at, at, at the other side. All right, and, and to our viewers, Anderson, uh, just updating them about what they're seeing. Uh, something we haven't seen in the eight days of protests in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, people were watching what was happening here. I thought it might uh, be some kind of a bellwether for what might happen in uh, the region. Uh, when we saw so many thousands come to the streets and demand uh, to have their voices heard, uh, to demand democratic reform, to demand that President Mubarak step down. Uh, well, now we're seeing something different, Anderson. Uh, the two sides going at it as we pull out here, Anderson, they're showing us a, a wider picture. But here it is again, the two sides rushing each other, pro and anti-Mubarak forces, or protesters, I should say, demonstrators, clashing violently. Anderson, uh, what was the signal uh, that something like this was coming today? How did they coordinate uh, this as well? Do we know? We do not know. I can tell you that there was a large uh, um, demonstration. I don't know if you want to. It, it, it actually sounded more like a party nearby our live shot location last night. We were on the air at you know from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. doing my broadcast. Um, and nearby, a few blocks from that location, which is several blocks from where we are now, there was a sound system set up, a, 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 a very uh, sophisticated sound system, much more so than any of the anti-Mubarak protesters have in the square a large sound system. They were playing music. There was a party atmosphere for pro-Mubarak supporters. Uh, this is something which, uh, which emerged right after President Mubarak made his announcement that he would not be stepping down, but that he would not be seeking re-election. So there was this large party, it, it, it felt like, after which you had large groups of pro-Mubarak supporters uh, kind of out on the streets, moving en masse, they would come to, to the, the building where a lot of television um, networks have offices, where we have an office, and they would stand outside. And while we were on the air last night, we knew the, the, the mood was changing. They started yelling at us, uh, yelling obscenities at us, throwing rocks at us. It, a few people tried to enter the building. There's not great security around that building. So that became very touchy. While we were on the, on the air, we were considering, you know, what would happen if they rushed into the building, if we had to fall back, or if they really started pelting us with rocks. So last night, at, you know, by 3, 4, 5 a.m. Uh, of this morning, I should say, Wednesday morning here in Cairo, we started to get the sense that pro-Mubarak forces were mobilizing. And look, there are pro-Mubarak forces in this country. There are people who, uh, the Interior Department here, the Interior Ministry, according to Fort, uh, Professor Fawad Ajami, has...